One of the first questions I asked was about Martin Scorsese's new film, The Wolf of Wall Street. No, I read the uh, screenplay years ago. It's a different. It's not like our movie was. It's more. Our movie was about the inside of Wall Street. That was. That's more about a guy, a single solo flyer, who has a fairly decadent life. And, but it's not really about the street that I knew. But are you curious to see it? Yeah, anything with Leo and Marty is always a good film, generally speaking. And I would love to see what they do. But, uh, what I saw in 2010 was really. Uh, it was kind of the end of Wall Street as I knew it. I mean, there's just nothing there that really fascinates me. It's so difficult an environment to work in. Everything is... I have to say the people are very smart, that's for sure. And I, I don't know that the college graduates are all going there to make money but like they were in the 80s. But uh, I won't be around to see the mess that they make. If they don't get out of this leveraging business and derivatives, they're gonna, it's not going to work. Well, what about Silicon Valley where there's enormous power and, and influence. Is that a theme that you'd be interested in exploring in a future film? I think it would make a, a great movie. I think it was well done. Social uh, Network uh, got a, 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 a taste of it. I think when you imitate something that's successful, sometimes you have to be very careful. I'd like to be the first one there. Uh, but, you know, don't go where all the heat is. Generally speaking, find, like in, if you invest your capital, find a new area that can, find a new subject. Um, this month marks the 50th anniversary of JFK's assassination. Yeah. And your film, JFK, is back in select theaters. Uh, what's, what's been the reception? What's performance been like? Film holds up. I watched it a few days ago with an audience. It really is strong. Uh, it, it's based on a lot of research. and We didn't, have, we didn't hide anything. We, we put out a compendium at the same time, footnoted everything we did, and the film resulted in the JFK Act being passed because there was such outrage about it. And the JFK Act actually led to the Assassination Records Review Board getting about four, maybe six million documents, you see. So their findings, which are released in many volumes and are hard to absorb the whole thing, but their findings are very important because they open up the case and give us more light into these dark areas. Uh, the uh, National Geographic Channel aired Killing Kennedy based on yeah. Bill O'Reilly's book. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, record Killing ratings Kennedy is the exactly the kind of movie that I was going against when I made JFK because that is a simplistic melodrama where you have a good guy, bad guy, and you create the typical movie with the, the sniper, the lone sniper coming after uh, the, the handsome president. It's a, it's a nice little fairy tale, but it's for simplistic. Uh, the, the evidence in the case, you have to look at the evidence with your own eyes and your own common sense. Uh, in my mind, the nub of the film is that Kennedy was shot from two sides. He was shot in the back and he was shot from the front. And no matter how you fancy up the evidence and you talk about all these gravitational physics and neuro effects and jet effects, it's all blah, blah, blah. The, the man, you see it on the Zapruder film, and the uh, autopsy revealed and people who saw him at, right at that moment after the death, after he died, always talk about the, the big shot, the kill shot was from the front to the front of his head and it blew out the back of his head and that's what people keep seeing and they keep seeing it still to this day. People who are at the autopsy revealed to the Assassination Records Review Board that the autopsy photos that are now in the National Archives have no resemblance to the, to the head and the body that they saw in Bethesda. So you tell me, it seems like it was a major medical fraud there in, in, uh, on that autopsy and that's what the Assassination Records Review Board revealed in more detail. And the original photographer, the AP photographer, John Stringer, was there too. He, he saw these photos. He said, I don't recognize it. You were asked on Twitter whether you might consider doing a film about President Obama, and your response was, I don't think so. He hasn't really done anything except manage the empire better than Bush. So th there, there's never the possibility that we'll see an Oliver Stone film about President Obama? I'm not getting younger. Uh, Mr. Obama doesn't. You know, I liked him very much. I voted for him in 2008, I'm certainly believing that change we can believe in was his slogan. And the change was not there. He continued the, the, the methods, practices of the war on terror. I thought that he was grown up enough and mature enough to really maybe pull us back from the war on terror because that, is, that was an over-exaggeration to begin with. Bush declared war on the whole world. You're either with us or against us, when in fact we were fighting 2,000 terrorists who could have been we could have curbed it with a limited use of force and intelligence. But be that as it may, we're in this hole now, and we haven't pulled back from that mind state, that siege, state of siege, where the United States 
is in, endangered by all the people in the world, by, we're surrounded by threatening countries, etc. That's a mindset that won't succeed in life. We need to join the world community. And uh, listen, Obama doesn't seem to have, as much as I respect his intelligence, he doesn't seem to have a fight, you know, backbone that Kennedy had, for example, or Roosevelt, because he had a mandate at that point, a sweeping mandate for real change, and he didn't take it. You are working on a script about MLK, uh, the possibility of Jamie Foxx starring in that. What is the financing process? What are you thinking about in terms of how you might get that film made, you know, produced? Well, that's been in the works off and on for 20 years. I started the process in 1995, but at Nixon had opened and it hadn't done as well as I'd hoped, and I went and I decided not to make a, a biopic. There were many scripts written in the interim. And I was called back, actually, recently to take another look into the process. I like the, pro I like the story very much. It's a great story to tell. But I'm wrestling with the script right now. I'm writing, rewriting the script. So that's my process. And I have to get a script that I believe in. I think we're there, almost. And I think Jamie wants to do it. But uh, until we get to the, uh, the, the, the go flag, or whatever you say, we're not really in the race. But uh, it might happen. It might happen. And you have been asked a lot of questions about NSA surveillance. Would you be interested in doing a film about Edward Snowden? I think Snowden would make a great subject, yeah. He's a very, uh, I think he's a, man, a young man of conscience, yes.